Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Assassin's Creed 2. Today is going to be a database day. Uh, recent entries. Okay, so hopefully this will let me go through all of them. I guess we'll start with uh, Santa Maria Novella. Santa Maria Novella. Rebecca... Rebecca C84. I know a challenge when I see one, go find that tomb. The first great basilica in Florence, Santa Maria Novella, was consecrated in 1420 despite being unfinished. The famous humanist Leon Battista Alberti designed the upper facade, completing the church in 1470. However, Santa Maria Novella's origins extend back before the Crusades to an ancient oratory located on the same site with a hidden tomb underneath. As of today, the tomb has not been uncovered. On a related note, one of my favorite quotes is located inside the basilica, written on the image of the tomb. I was once what you are, and what I am you will become. Alright, we have uh, the Mercato Vecchio, Rebecca C84. One of those strange glyphs Sean mentioned is on this landmark. You should go find it. The center of Florentine business, the Mercato Vecchio served all the shopping needs of the city. To quote Antonio Pucci, a 14th century Florentine poet, physicians dwelt around for every ill, and here were linen cloths and flax merchants, pork vendors, and apothecaries. The Mercado was established first in Roman times at the site of the Forum, and only in 1030 was first documented as a marketplace. Staple foods from the countryside, like grain, were the most popular goods so by wool. However, shoppers became bored with the basics, to quote a 15th century poet, Il Panormita. There, halfway down the street, stands a happy whorehouse, which you will know by the very smell of the place. Palluzzo Medici. Completed in 1455 by Cosimi di Medici's living architect, Michael Lozo di Bartolomo Michelazzi. The Palazzo Medici was constructed as the private residence of the Medici family. It was designed according to the values of humanism, the dominant ideology of the Renaissance, which attempts to engage the viewer with structures built on a more human scale. At least that's the theoretical ideology of the Palazzo, but the effect goes something more like this. The outside is foreboding and keeps people out. If the facade could talk, it seems to be saying, get back, you do not belong here, you are not important enough to enter. In contrast, the interior courtyard, which only the Medici and their guests saw, has none of the exterior's hard edges. It's full of luscious, curving, rounded arches, like a wedding cake. It says, you've arrived, welcome to paradise. In fact, Cosimo both approved the courtyard and rejected an earlier architectural plan by Bruno Lesci that would have led to a more open facade. He wanted a Medici fortress inside Florence. San Lorenzo Rebecca C84, one of those strange glyphs Sean mentioned is on this landmark. You should go find it. The church in which all the Medici went to die, San Lorenzo, claims to be the oldest in Florence. It was construct consecrated in 393 while still outside the city walls. Michelangelo designed the inner facade while Filippo Brunelleschi, the creator of Santa Maria del Fiere's dome, designed the layout. He died before the church was finished, and several of his designs were subsequently modified. Containing nearly 50 tombs, the Medici crypt was intended to house the Holy Sepulchre, containing the body of Christ at its center. However, attempts to buy it and then to steal it from Jerusalem failed, proving that bankers can buy a lot of things, but not integrity. Jacopo di Pazzi, the money. This guy was the head of the Pazzi family, and he ran their banking business. An associate of Lorenzo de' Medici, he had nothing against him personally. So he hired four Templar hitmen to take care of the situation for him. Bernardo di Bandino Baroncelli, brought up to hate the Medici family for the exile of his cousins, Baroncelli ran the numbers in the Pazzi bank by day and murdered for the Templars at night. It was Baroncelli who delivered the first blow. Stefano de Bagnoni. Known for his cruelty, Bagnone was trained in Rome as a Templar butcher. It was Bagnone who stabbed Lorenzo de' Medici in the back. Antonio Maffei. Witness to the sacking of Volterra by Florentine mercenaries, Maffei blamed Lorenzo. He joined the Templars to seek revenge. It was Maffei who slashed Lorenzo's neck. Archbishop Francesco Salviati. 
Convinced he would be the next Archbishop of Florence, Salviati was enraged when Lorenzo stood in his way. But the Templars were there to heal his wounds. It was Salviati who marched their troops into the city. All right. Jacobo Patti Conspirators. Jacobo di Patti, date of birth, 1421, profession, banker, noble. Bernardo di Bendino Barnoselli, date of birth, 1453, profession, banker. Stefano de Begonone, Begnone, date of birth, 1418, profession, priest and advisor to Jacopo di Pazzi. Antonio Maffi, date of birth, 1450, profession, priest. Francesco Salviati, date of birth, 1443, profession, archbishop of Pisa. Lorenzo di Medici. Date of birth, 1449, profession, ruler of Florence. Simultaneously keeping the dream of the Florentine Republic alive while leaving the people with very little legit legitimate power, Lorenzo di Medici deftly ruled Renaissance Florence during its golden age. Lorenzo's grandfather, Cosimo, built the Medici Bank, creating one of the most powerful financial institutions in Europe and becoming fabulously rich in the process. Considered the smartest of Cosimo's grandchildren, Lorenzo was already being sent on diplomatic missions as a child. Although his father was inept and sickly, his mother was a poet. She introduced Lorenzo to many of the prominent artists of the day, instilling in him a love of art and culture. In 1469, when he was only 20, Lorenzo became the head of the Medici family, at which point he quickly gained control of the Florentine government through friends in the city council, payoffs, strategic marriages, and threats. But Florence prospered with Lorenzo as its puppeteer. A peace was made between the warring states of Italy and several masterpieces of Renaissance art by the likes of Botticelli and Michelangelo were made under his care. Ultimately, Lorenzo was happier writing poetry and shadow governing than directing his family's bank. During his lifetime, several branches of the bank collapsed and the Medici assets were wasted on frivolities such as jousting tournaments. Lorenzo died in 1492. Nearly broke, he was unable to prevent the popular backlash against his rich lifestyle and the mad monk Savonarola's rise to power. Poliziano. Date of birth, 1454, profession, scholar, and poet. Somewhat of a prodigy, Poliziano learned Latin and Greek at age 10 and by 18 had already become a published author. Lorenzo di Medici hired him to act as the tutor for his children and made sure he received a post at the studio Fiorentino. Unfortunately, Poliziano must not have been everyone's favorite instructor. He died of arsenic poisoning in 1494, probably mur murdered by Piero di Medici, his former student. Francesco di Pazzi. Francesco di Pazzi. Brought up as a noble in a city captivated by the newly rich Medici family, Francesco was taught to hate the middle class and its social climbers. Dismayed, he watched as the Medici bank eclipsed his own and centuries of influence over the Florentine government slipped away. It looks like the Spaniard offered him a solution. Rather than compete in something as dirty as banking, Francesco only had to do one thing for the Templars, one thing to put the middle class in their place for good. Kill the Medici. Giovanni Auditore tried to stop Francesco by putting him in jail. But the Templars took care of that. Date of birth, 1444. Profession, noble and banker. Giuliano di Medici. Date of birth, 1453. Profession, noble. A playboy to his brother Lorenzo's statesman, Gi Giuliani... Sorry, Giuliano di Medici was well known for his famous jousting tournaments, his handsome physique, and his illegitimate child. When Giuliano was killed in the Pazzi conspiracy, his son Giulio was considered legitimate due to a loophole in canon law that allowed marriages to occur privately between two people, meaning that his parents could have agreed that they were actually married without telling anyone about it. Watch out, Catholics, your mistresses have more power than you think. Once legitimately a Medici, this child of a tradesman's daughter went on to become Pope Clement VII. Get this, Clement VII was Pope during the sack of Rome in 1527, during which he was taken prisoner in the Castel Sant'Anglo. He escaped his captors disguised as a tradesman. Son of tradesman daughter escaped poor past to become Pope, only to become a tradesman once more. Oh, the irony. La Volpe. Date of birth unknown, profession thief. 
There is almost no trace of La Volpe, the fox, in the history books. The man's obviously, the name's obviously a pseudonym, but for whom is anyone's guess? What small data is available seems to be almost mythical. La Volpe is reported to have robbed the Pope's carriage without any of his guards noticing, including the Pope, who was sitting inside the carriage. One night in 1467, he was seen on the rooftops of the Palazzo della Signoria, the Palazzo Medici, and the Santa Croce, all at the same time. Some claim that he's immortal, never aging, while others say that his violet eyes can see through buildings, perusing the contents inside. And that should be all of our recent entries. Does that... We back out now. Does that clear? Does not clear, but... Okay, I think we went through all of that. I think these are all the same. Yeah, and then these should have all been covered already. It's just locations I'm a little bit unsure of. I might just go through them all again at the end. I don't know. <laughs> uh, secret locations. Bora Grossa. Oh, they, they, they mean like the tombs. We're waiting on that. We have... Yeah, that's too fragmented. So I guess we'll do... Uh... Doom today. I was expecting a lot more content, but assuming that recent entries is in any way is in any way um, um, comprehensive of the uh, <laughs> of what we've done um, or been exposed to lately, then uh, we did not have a lot to go over. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pop up here. Whee. Of course, the poster's on the other side of the street, but we can do a tomb real quick. It shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Of course, I say that, and it'll be like the worst thing ever. <laughs> okay. Let's see. There we go. I guess we'll just keep going up then. But yeah, I figure we do a tomb in the amount of time it takes that our chest at uh, Monterey Gonari, blah, 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 will be probably full, and then we can go and uh, spend that money. There we go. Now we are immune. I heard someone shouting, stay back, so that was probably a fee for a Templar agent or something. Don't really care. Money is not an issue too much right now. There we go. And no one in like a billion years or however long this has been here, not billion obviously, but no one's ever tried to fiddle with that. Oh, this place is gonna be a trip. Di Grazia, stay away from the artwork on the walls. And when your men paint the dome, take care not to disturb any of the sacred relics in the Lanterna on top. They are the most important artifacts in our church. Yes, yes, Padre. Just make sure to pay us the full sum for our work. Thank you. All right. Il Dumo secret. Explore Basilica Santa Maria del Fiore and find the assassin seal hidden within. I'm up to the top of the door. Okie dokie. Up, up, up. So I assume we're going to start here. There we go. There, we should be able to probably drop down and boom. Find the assassin's sarcophagus. All right. 
So at this point, we're just kind of traversing the other to the other side of the room, I guess. Alrighty. Thankfully, I do not have to worry about those ropes. No! That was not the way, apparently. Oh, that's going to get annoying. Alright. Up we go. Okay, good. He can... Alright, back down. Then around. All right, now let's go. Uh, I guess we go. Hmm. Do we swing these at all? I feel like no. Where is pigeons are there? So where is. There we go. Okay, so that unlocks a shortcut for us. Now I have a way back up in case I fall. Alrighty. So it's pointing us this way. There we go. Uh there we go. No, 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 no. Uh, I didn't want him to swing off of that second one. Alrighty. There we go, because I want to... There we go. Why couldn't he be smart and aim for that in the first place? There we go. There we go. Is there like... Okay, so where do we go from here? Hmm. Aha, uh -huh. all right. So we can come up this way. And then take it through this way, which will unlock another shortcut for us, I think. Or at least it's about to. Uh, let's, uh, let's align ourselves. There we go. <laughs> Not taking any chances. Yeah, he said their most important relics are at the top, so maybe the top is where I have to go? Uh, okay. Alright, well, let's start here. So we've got to get up. Uh, let's play this one safe and go this way. Oh, okay. He did not like that. Uh, I guess I go this way. <laughs> I don't suppose I can climb these. Nope. Back on the here, I guess. But for what? purpose all right so I guess I I think I see what they want me to do there we go so now we're up to the next level Alright, so then, okay, 
we come up on these railings, or we could come up on those railings, but where does that get us? We could get a, if we get on that beam, maybe. That might lead us to the, uh, there we go. <laughs> Come on down. This camera angle makes me think this is part of the puzzle. Is this something I can climb up? No. There we go. All right. Because now we can hop onto this beam. And we should be able to hop on this and this. Okay, so that's our ultimate goal. To get over there, I think. Uh, so there's stuff above us. I don't think we can climb that. That leads down there. Maybe along the wall and we get to that other side. Okay. I think I see vaguely what they want us to do. Uh, can you climb up all that way? Do I have to go, are one of these going to be like a little taller than the others and let me climb up that way? I can see him doing something like that. There we go. Okay, so now we can, I'm not, oh, why are you going that way? All right, so now, there we go. There we go. All right. There we go. And now up we go. Oh, thank God that's in this early <laughs> the game just ladder switching like that all right so now i guess we just go boop. we can hop across these no oh ho, ho, ho. that would have cost me a lot of time all right Okay, I guess we're just climbing this. Uh, can okay, we gotta come out here? We okay. All right, up we go. Ah, uh, yes. Money! All oh, the money! And that must be the seal. No? Okay. No, I gotta open the sarcophagus, but... That is an assassin symbol on her. Alrighty. Let's just get... Oh, just three chests? Okay. Oh, so that's like the symbol of the alchemist or something. And exit through the nearby window. Seal acquired. The seal of Iltani. And we got another bonus for complete. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Uh, 
Not bad at all, all things considered. I've heard horror stories about uh, the puzzles in this game, but they're not that bad. Ooh, hey, more chests and a feather. We may as well get that while we're up here. It's like, do you want to go down the slow way or the fast way? Well, of course we want to go down the fast way. There we go. There should be like the capstone feather in our brothers, dead brothers collection. Uh, I can't see any uh, any hay bales to drop into, so I'm not going to take the chance. But yeah, we can get down here like a normal person, though. Wee. Oh, there we go. So this is how you would have to have gotten to the top if you just wanted to get there from the ground normally. Holy shit. Alright, well it's not too bad, I guess. Easier going down than it is up, though. Okay, so we'll have to drop. Okay, we survived that. There's some hay. Uh, do I have pigeons around here? Can I have pigeons guide me? Nope. No uh, pigeon guidance. I suppose we may as well run the perimeter, make sure there's not like a hidden chest or something. But I doubt it. Yeah, it's pretty... Pretty empty up here. There we go. And we can just get some real quick healing. May as well stock up on our health supplies. There we go. That's better for now. But prevention is the best cure, I always say. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, then in that case, I think we're going to call that a day for us. So with that, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time. And stay safe out there, and we'll see you then.